This video is all about 5 Wild Edible Greens. Hey everyone, my name is Judy from Happy Holistics and today we're going to be talking about some wild edible greens that you can forage for. But first things first, we need to clear up some misconceptions about wild edible greens and what it even means. To me, wild greens means that we didn't intentionally plant it. So we didn't toss any seeds into the ground and we didn't transplant it from a friend's garden. It just grew naturally. And as such, many of these wild edible greens are considered as weeds and can be the bane of a gardener's existence if we allow them to. I'm a half glass full kind of girl, so I consider it as free food. And then there's the concept of edible. On more than one occasion, the reaction I get from the word edible is anything can be edible as long as you can put it in your mouth and swallow it. This is technically not true because there are tons of toxic plants that can make you sick when eaten. There are also poisonous mushrooms that can kill you if you eat them. So no, not everything you put in your mouth and swallow is edible. Lemon balm smells kind of minty and lemony at the same time and are actually the plant that Melissa essential oils are derived from. So they can improve sleep, mood, and cognition. I use them raw in Vietnamese noodles. I'll leave a link to the recipe below. However, be warned, I do know people who don't like raw mints because they've got such a strong flavor. Mugwort is used in East Asian countries and has blood sugar regulating capabilities as well as anti-tumor properties. I've left all the references in the description box below. The underside of the leaves are silvery white and mine has a hairy stem. Mugwort pollen can be allergenic, so obviously stay away if this is you. It also looks like the allergen ragweed, however a difference is that mugwort smells fragrant while ragweed doesn't really have a smell. But if you're allergic, I highly doubt that you'll be smelling these plants anytime soon. This is a broadleaf plantain weed and is unrelated to the banana version of plantain. Eating the smaller leaves is like spinach and has been reported to contain antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. If you get bitten by a bug, crush the leaves and rub the juices onto the bite. Stinging nettle has tiny needles all over their leaves and stems that make your skin reddish and feel like burning if you accidentally get pricked, which makes you wonder how desperate people had to be in order to eat it. However, it is great for reducing allergy and hay fever symptoms, so there's that. You should probably harvest this with gloves, a bowl, and scissors, but since the hairs all run in one direction, if you move from the base of a leaf towards the point, you can easily pluck it off. Here I am petting the pointy leaf. Move in the opposite direction and you're not going to have a fun time. Understandably, if you'd rather not harvest nettle yourself, you can purchase it online. But just to let you know, once it's cooked, it no longer stings or burns you, so you're safe. I make a tea out of it. Garlic mustard is one of the hardiest weeds ever. However, their roots do emit chemicals that sabotage the growth of neighboring plants, so garlic mustard should definitely be removed and preferably be eaten because it's good for you. It smells garlicky and has a mild taste and contains nutrients like vitamins A and C. I've left a link for recipes below. While foraging is technically not allowed in Toronto public spaces, it is one of Ontario's most unwanted plants. So I'm quite certain no one's going to mind if you pluck it at a park. You do want to be careful not to purposely plant this in your garden because that'll contribute to the invasion problem as seeds can fly with the wind, be transferred from a pet, or from the bottom of your shoe and grow elsewhere. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you found this information helpful. Some of the resources that I use in order to forage safely include these two books. So I have Free Food and Medicine Worldwide by Marcus Rothkranz. He also goes through a bunch of toxic plants that you should be aware of, as well as toxic lookalikes. So this is a super useful resource to have. On occasion, I also reference this book called Power Plants by Bryce Wilde and Frankie Flowers, or Frankie Perugini if you watch BT. Um, I found this book really helpful in terms of how to grow herbs. So not only do they cover slash touch base on some weeds like the stinging nettle, but they also talk about how to grow stuff like lavender and basil and all that useful, delicious stuff. So definitely check out this book as well as this book if you are interested in foraging for your foods. It's also a good idea to download plant identification apps to make sure you've got the right edible plant. If you're unsure, just don't eat it. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video, and I will see you next week. 
For more information about what I do, please visit my website at www.happyholistics.ca.